Hello, I'm Dr. Maura Rossman, Howard County Health Officer. Welcome, and thank you for taking the Opioid Overdose Response Training. This training will show you how to recognize the signs and symptoms of a person who has suffered an opioid overdose. It will also prepare you to respond in order to help save a life. Thanks to a grant from the Aetna Foundation, AED boxes located in county buildings will now house a kit containing Narcan, a drug that reverses an opioid overdose. Each kit includes gloves, a face mask, and a Narcan administration instruction card. We know that the opioid crisis has affected people all over Howard County, and an overdose can happen anywhere and anytime. We hope that by providing Narcan kits and training employees, we can make a difference in the life of someone in crisis. Thank you for your time today. Let's start the training. Welcome to the Overdose Response Program for Howard County employees. My name is Shante Hunt and I'm the Overdose Response Program Coordinator. Before we get started, let's talk about what opioids are. We're going to learn how to revive someone who is involved in an opioid overdose. So opioids are drugs that come directly from opium. They can be either natural or synthetic. Natural opioids typically come from drugs like morphine and codeine, where there are synthetics as well that are synthesized in a laboratory to mimic what the opium properties do. These drugs, again, are prescriptions and illegal. They come in pills, powders, capsules, and liquids, can be swallowed, drunk, snorted, or injected. Opioids do an awesome job of managing our pain. They also suppress our coughs, and many of us have probably taken a codeine cough syrup. In addition to that, they're used to treat opioid disorders, and those drugs that help with that are buprenorphine and methadone maintenance. The problem with opioids, however, can be that they create a sense of euphoria. And this euphoria can often lead people on to addiction. The drugs last in our bodies from 3 to 24 hours, depending on the medication. In addition, in excessive amounts, these drugs can actually cause our urge to breathe to be suppressed. These medications are called central nervous system depressants. And this is how we treat opioid addiction. Examples of common prescription opioids are hydrocodone, oxycodone, codeine, morphine, and fentanyl. Now we're going to discuss recognizing an opiate overdose. An opiate overdose happens when a toxic amount of that substance overwhelms the body. Oftentimes, many people who use drugs don't use just one substance. They often use multiple substances, they're polysubstance abusers. So when they mix, let's say, an opiate with a benzodiazepine, both of them being central nervous system depressants, it suppresses their urge to breathe and opiate overdose is imminent. What leads to an overdose is the failure of the respiration. Our respiratory system is failing. The quickest way to help this person is to get oxygen to their body through breathing. Again, we have to remember the brain can only survive for six minutes without oxygen. What are the signs and symptoms that will be seen in an opiate overdose? The person is typically going to be unconscious, unresponsive. They're gonna be gray and clammy to the touch. They're gonna have bluing around their lips and their fingertips due to the lack of oxygen. In addition, you'll often hear a loud snoring, gurgling sound in their throat which is known as the death rattle and can be their last breaths. There are five steps involved in an opiate overdose. You're going to rouse and stimulate, you're gonna call 911, give the Narcan, give resuscitation, and then care for the individual. In your AED box, you'll find your blue Narcan pouch. Inside your pouch, you'll have gloves, a rescue mask, an instruction card,
and of course, the Narcan nasal spray. To begin the rescue, we need to make noise. Hey buddy, are you okay? Are you all right? If the person doesn't respond to sound, then we move to pain and we'll do a sternum rub, taking our knuckles going up and down the sternum bone. If the person doesn't respond to noise or to the sternum rub, we need to call 911 right away. Many people may have other health conditions that we're unaware of. In addition, the Narcan medication that we're gonna to learn to administer is only temporary, and the person may actually need additional doses to, in order to recover. This also could not be an opioid situation because other situations and health conditions mimic an opioid overdose. Calling 911 at this point is very vital. What are we going to tell the 911 dispatcher? We need to actually say where we are, the signs and symptoms that we're seeing, and if in fact we have Narcan and we plan to administer it. The next step is actually to give the Narcan. What is Narcan? Narcan is an effective way to reverse an opioid overdose. This medication actually has no potential for abuse whatsoever. The side effects are actually minimal or rare. It can actually be given to pregnant women or even to children. However, this medication wears off in 30 to 90 minutes. So again, it was always important for us to call 911 before administering. To administer the Narcan, you're going to actually peel back the foil here and remove it from the box. You're going to place it between your thumb and your two fingers in order to dispense. Next, you'll gently insert the nozzle into the nasal cavity as far as possible. Press the plunger, administering all the medication at once. Now that we've given the Narcan, what we're going to do is assess for breathing. Some people may begin to breathe on their own, others will not. Rescue breaths, again, is going to be the quickest way to get oxygen to the body. However, if you are CPR trained, you can also assess for pulse and provide CPR as needed or follow the dispatcher's instructions. When we assess for breath, we're actually looking, listening, and feeling to see if we see the chest rising or if we hear or fear any breaths from the nose or the mouth. Again, rescue breathing is the quickest way to get oxygen to the body, and it's the most important thing that you can do to prevent someone from dying. If you don't see any breaths, what we're gonna do is try to begin rescue breathing. You're gonna look in the mouth to see if you see any foreign objects. If you do, you're going to remove them. Then we'll put the mask on the face, tilt the chin back, Pinch the nostrils and give two firm breaths, one breath every five seconds thereafter. One, two, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand. And we'll keep that up for about two minutes. If the person has not revived by then, we'll give the second dose of Narcan. If they're able to become aroused and awakened, and they're able to sit up, keep them calm, and stay with the person. However, we probably need to put them in the recovery position if, in fact, we need to leave them for any reason. Narcan can create stomach upset on its own. However, if a person is opiate dependent, they will begin to go into withdrawal and the potential for vomiting is imminent. What we need to do is place one hand under their head and then pull the thigh over the body to lodge them on their side. This will prevent them from choking or prevent aspiration. Let's begin to discuss the Good Samaritan Law. That law has been around for decades, and basically it helps us good citizens to be protected when we want to help our neighbors. Therefore, we have no liability when we're assisting someone in administering Narcan. Additionally, the Good Samaritan Law was extended in order to prevent additional deaths. Oftentimes, those involved in criminal activity were not calling 911 to help get support in reviving their loved ones or their friends or family members. Therefore, the law was extended in that a person who administers Narcan and calls for help will not be prosecuted on drug paraphernalia charges or drug possession charges or administering alcohol to minors. For resources on Narcan, 
or any mental health matters or behavioral health matters, please contact the Health Department, the Maryland Crisis Hotline, and Grassroots. I want to thank you for your time and attention today, and remember to familiarize yourself with the AED box nearest you.